Welcome to Wesley's channel. This is Wesley's News. Today I'm going to be having Little Genie, which is a young boy who made two videos, and I found these videos interesting enough to bring to your attention. These videos are just the explanation how to tune the resonance circuit in practice. Resonance is a major requirement for DALI and Wuslan device, and actually all of the devices that have a nature of electrostatic energy transfer and conversion. Лидеры Джинни, спасибо большое за ваши видики. Я подумал, что можно бы дать их людям всего мира на английском языке вместе с линком на ваше видео как пример настройки резонансного контура. Спасибо большое. Hello everyone. I'm going to explain to you how to tune coil into resonance. We have 80 wines gauge 2.5 mm. We have another coil, 10 wines with a thick wire, and the middle wire of it goes to the generator. That's the nanosecond impulse forming circuitry generator, 24 volts power supply that is being powered from the grid. In order to be able to tune coil into the resonance, we need to know inductance of the coil and frequency of the generator. When bigger coil is connected to generator, we need to have a proper length of the wire between the big coil and the smaller coil to reach the resonance. So if the big coil has a one meter of wire, then the smaller one should have a four meter. So it's one to four. But it happened to me that I have not necessarily the length of the wire on the small coil that is corresponding to the requirement to reach the resonance. I'm gonna present to you what's going on right now. So actually what he's explaining is that if you don't have the length of the wire that is required for the coil by itself to create the resonance circuit without additional capacitor, there is a need to connect the capacitor into it and then you would be able to reach the resonance as well. The frequency that is coming from the signal generator to the big coil and then inducing in the small coil that the two leads are connected to is 113.9 kilohertz right now. I am repeating that part of the clip. You see that the small coil is inserted in the big one and the reading is being made out of that coil shows currently 40 kilohertz. So we might assume that the big coil that now you see being connected should have a 40 kilohertz as well. And hey, Houston, we have a problem. We have a 113.9 kilohertz on the big coil. The explanation is quite simple. On the right hand side, you see the radiator with the transistor on it and the small board and there's the square wave nanosecond impulse generator and it's connected to that big coil. So if we have had a sinusoidal signal there would be no such thing as that we give from that generator 40 kilohertz and all of a sudden we can read different frequency on the smaller coil that was injected into the big one. However, even with sinusoidal signal, we might have tuned to the harmonic of the fundamental frequency coming from the sinusoidal generator. So we are not dealing with sinusoidal signal and we have to now find out what is a square wave nanosecond impulse signal. Think of it as air transformer you got to stop when you look at it to follow up. This is the center top coil and on the right hand side we have nanosecond impulse generator. And that's how the generator could look like when you look on the right hand side coil with the top in. 
that could be our error one doesn't matter that in here is presented as with a core I'm going to add a few words about loose coupling and close coupling in near field between two coils. When the small coil is fully retracted, we have a very loose coupling. When coil is very much inside a big coil, we have a close coupling. If we were dealing with sinusoidal signal from the generator only, you wouldn't have a different frequency in primary and secondary coils. And if we pull out the coil to have a loss coupling, as shown, then we would only have a difference in the amplitude of the coil that is extracted, and now it is at loss coupling in near field. For easiness, I have included the picture of mechanism that is made out of the two coils where one could be pushed in or pulled out and that's how you control the amplitude of uh, the voltage that is induced in the second coil but the frequency stays the same in some rare situation you may find that you tune secondary coil into the harmonic first second third whatever the harmonic of the primary frequency from sinusoidal signal of the generator. However, we would be dealing with quite different scenario when we have a square wave that is an output from the signal generator. On the upper graph with an arrow, we see square wave full period. And then that if that would be on the primary coil, the big coil, then the secondary coil might have, have one of the composite frequencies that makes out the square wave signal. On the lower part, when we see the only positive impulses of the square wave signal, the output might be only half of a period of the sinusoidal component. However, the reality of life is not that clean and not easy. The major dependency of the frequency of the secondary coil, where primary coil has a square wave signal uh, uh, as an input, is what is the frequency of the secondary coil. In other words, with here in the bandwidth of the frequency that makes out the square wave signals, all of the components, you can tune the secondary coil only to one frequency, particular one, and if the bandwidth is narrow, then yes, you're going to have that sinusoidal component as an output, and that would be that particular frequency of that composition. That would be for the upper part. When we're dealing with the lower part, we have only positive peaks. So now, when you look at the top of the positive peak, look at the left lower corner, that flat top is the DC signal. It's a DC current, it's a DC voltage. So the amplitude will stand up by the voltage. Now, at the output, we might have, have a sinusoidal component, which also would be positive. And that would also be depend on how many winds and what kind of capacitor makes out the resonance circuit of the secondary coil. You see a quick uh, simulation of how sinusoidal wave is being made. So actually this is a generation or uh, a sequence of higher and higher frequency sine wave that adds up to a square wave. In the graph, we could see the sum of the superimposed waves. The more higher frequency waves we add, the more square wave like the sum becomes. And uh, some entertaining factor, lightning. It is pretty much like our square wave signal, 
the top of the square is DC and uh, the rise time and the fall time would be that what makes the components of the AC. So lightning, it is the same phenomenon that we see in a Kua device or DALI or Ruslan. And that should explain why do we have a 4 kilohertz at the secondary coil, the primary big coil we have a 13.9, although components of square wave are not very much simple as I explained, I was trying to make it brief and very much informative. We read now the frequency 4 kilohertz. Now we're going to find out what is the inductors. You can use online calculator for it. You can find out based on the properties of the coils that are required by the calculator. So there will be number of winds and the diameter of the coil. So now we see 131 microhenry. So now we have a frequency and then we have an inductance. We're going to go to online calculator. So we put 40 kilohertz. 131 microhams in the data. So we have 121 nanofarads of the capacity that is required to tune that circuit to the desired frequency. So by that, we actually don't need that much wire because capacitive reactance would make it for us. The root capacitive reactance of the capacitor that is in resonance circuit with the coil. Is trying to make a good contact. One hundred that might be due to the increpancy of the measurement inaccuracy of the measurement we have a 220 watts uh, 220 volts 40 watts light bulb and the tungsten base so I'm going to connect it to 24 volts and you would see no light. So the 24 volts is being used to power up the nanosecond generator. I connected it to the coil, small coil, and you see very little of the voltage on it, so it means that even though the capacitor is pretty good one, there is no resonance. So now he's trying to add the capacitor, that bank of capacitor with the parallel connected capacitors will make up for the resonance. So when he touched the other side of the capacitor to the coil and the light bulb, you see that the transfer of the energy is much better due to the resonance. So the closest that you are to 13.9 kilohertz that comes from the generator, the better the transformation it is. So that call is no longer 4 kilohertz. But that's my comment. He's adding more of the capacitance, showing you that uh, the intensity of the, of the light is 
diminishing, that means that adding more capacity doesn't help. It actually worsens the effect. So now we disconnected the capacitor, but we left the light bulb on the coil, so we call and that's what you see. Okay, the next video would be much more interesting as he operates with quite big light bulbs. Plenty of you would love to have such a device at home or make money on it as buyers every person that is working on the planet Earth and is over 18 years old. But it's for there is a learning curve and I hope that's what I'm tutoring to you will help. There will be always somebody who is smarter than me and I would expect from him the same. This is Wesley and it's Wesley's News.